by 2030, death could become optional. No, this isn't science fiction. This is real talk. Sam Altman put up $180 million into delaying death. Jeff Bezos, $3 billion into defying aging. Do they know something? We don't. AI is already saving lives in operating rooms as we speak. But that is just the beginning. Scientific miracles are now taking place at an incredible speed. But the real miracle workers, they're not wearing white coats anymore. They are AI. Today we'll show you how AI is making aging optional. Robots performing surgeries with superhuman precision, AI detecting cancers before doctors do, drugs being developed in months instead of years, and paralyzed patients walking again. And of course, the real breakthrough. AI is now targeting aging itself. Not just treating diseases, but reversing the biological clock. The race to make death optional has begun. Can you trust a robot with your life? Can AI really make you biologically younger? Stick around and find out. But first, hit that like button and subscribe because we are about to dive into the most important revolution in human history, the defeat of aging itself. Let's get it. Chapter Zero, The Longevity Revolution. Before we dive into how AI is transforming medicine, let's talk about the end game, defeating death itself. There exists a concept called longevity escape velocity. It's a theoretical point where technology extends your lifespan faster than you age. So even as you grow one year older, science adds, say, two years to your life expectancy. Jose Luis Cordero, a longevity expert, predicts this watershed moment will take place by 2030. If we make it to 2030, he says, we'll basically live long enough to live forever because we will gain one year per every year we survive and more and more. But this isn't just theory anymore, real money a porn. As mentioned, Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, invested $180 million in Retro Biosciences, a startup with an audacious goal to add 10 years to a healthy human's lifespan. Their approach? Cellular reprogramming. AI designed drugs and targeting the root causes of aging. Now, Altman isn't the only one. Jeff Bezos invested $3 billion into Altos Labs three years ago with the same mission in mind, using AI to reprogram cells back to the state of youth. Preliminary results show they've already reversed aging markers in human cells in the lab, and that's just what has been made public. The billionaire, they sure know something. The race to make death optional is afoot, and AI is the key. Now let's see how AI is already changing medicine today and how these breakthroughs are building towards the ultimate goal. Chapter 1. The Da Vinci Surgical System Would you get on an operating table knowing that the scalpel isn't in the hands of a surgeon, but in the grip of a robotic arm? More than 12 million people already have. That's why the Da Vinci System is used in 60 countries and keeps smashing surgical records year after year. Da Vinci isn't just a robot. It's surgical superpowers in the form of an extension of the operator's hands. 3D vision, 10x zoom, micro-level precision, it performs operations through tiny incisions across oncology, urology, gynecology, and even heart surgeries. Just imagine giving your surgeon four arms that don't tremble, never get tired, and move with absolute grace. That is the Da Vinci. It can hold an organ in place and make a precise cut while avoiding even the smallest blood vessels. And what if the surgeon messes up? Well, the robot just blocks the movement and pinpoints the air. Here's a couple examples you can search online for just to illustrate the point. Last year, NYU Lagon Health performed the world's first fully robotic double lung transplant. And in London, surgeon Jeffrey Ahmed, with the help of the Da Vinci, performed a hysterectomy in just 40 minutes, a procedure that normally takes over two hours. Chapter 2. Examples of Robotic Surgery in Action Enter Elon Musk's Neuralink R1. This bot implants brain electrodes thinner than a human hair with micron-level accuracy and minimal damage. The whole operation takes 15 minutes and basically sets up a brain-computer interface in humans. It's already done and fully autonomously at that because it's impossible for a human to match this precision. Three people have already had the Neuralink chip installed thus far, and by year's end, that number will grow to 30. Fully paralyzed patients are already using it to move cursors and play online shooters with their minds. And China's Neurocess, Neuralink's direct competitor, is going one step further, translating not just motion, but speech. Meanwhile, Corindus Corpath GRX lets cardiologists operate remotely across cities. This is the world's first robotic platform for procedures of this sort. A notable, for instance, Ryan Matter performed vascular operations in New York and San Francisco, all the while sitting in Massachusetts. And in the UK, NHS robotic surgeries hit 70,000 last year. That's double from 2022 and 10 times more than in 2014. This isn't a trial anymore, folks. This is reality for operating rooms. Here's a conundrum, though. 
AI isn't just taking on routine work, it's now doing what we once believed only human hands could do. Are we ready to trust it? Chapter 3 AI in Medical Diagnostics We doubt an AI that scanned thousands of x-rays with 95% accuracy, yet we'll trust a doctor who squints at a CT scan wondering if it's pneumonia or just a rib. Not a joke. John Hopkins Medicine says diagnostic errors in serious illness cases cause death or disability in over 800,000 people annually in the US alone. We laugh when our doctor Googles our symptoms, but maybe it's time to take a minute because AI-based diagnostic systems have moved far beyond the level of, hmm, what to do if patient has a rash or a fever. For example, Google Health and DeepMind trained an AI on 90,000 mammograms. The results were staggering. AI outperformed even experienced radiologists. On average, 6% fewer false positives and 9% less false negatives that a total of six expert radiologists missed. That's on top of the 88% reduction of workload. Basically, no need for a second opinion. And the kicker? This AI did it all with just one scan. The doctors had patient histories, CTs, notes, and still got the short end of it. And what about our eyes? Well, the FDA-approved IDX DR eye system detects diabetic retinopathy in a minute. No doctor needed, just a PDF that might save your vision. And here's perhaps the strangest but most notable example of them all. A small study compared doctors with and without ChatGPT's help. GPT scored 90 out of 100, doctors with GPT got 76, and without it, even lower. Why? It's almost funny until it's not. Overconfidence. They were more likely to stick with what they thought was right. Laura Zwan from Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam explained it like this. People are usually overconfident when they believe they're right. Turns out very few doctors actually know how to use chatbots effectively. They simply don't know how to tap into AI's ability to solve complex diagnostic puzzles and explain its reasoning. Don't get us wrong. Doctors are brilliant. But they're still human. And AI doesn't replace them, but it may be their most reliable second opinion before it's too late. We've got AI to ER like Mr. T to AT. We've got AI spitting diagnoses like M&M pre-encore. And that's pretty much everything except for the medicine. Chapter 4. AI and Pharmaceutical Research That's right, the cure itself. And this part might be the most mind-blowing because molecules that once took years to discover are now found in months, and the right pills are hitting the shelves much faster than we can imagine. According to a report from the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation, AI can cut drug development time in half. That's huge, because drug development is notoriously slow and expensive. It takes anywhere between 15 to 16 years and billions of dollars to get one new drug to the market, and 92% of early-stage candidates fail to get approved. AI flips that script. Algorithms now assist with everything. Gene analysis, molecule selection, clinical trial design, and the result? Phase 1 success rates jump almost to 90% double the old average. Accenture Incorporated, for instance, developed a cancer drug using its AI platform and got it to clinical trials in just a year. At Oxford, gene analysis for Alzheimer's drugs dropped from months to mere days. And DeepMind's AlphaFold cracked protein structure prediction, solving a 50-year mystery in biology. This advancement has fast-tracked progress in treating malaria, cancer, and even developing enzymes that break down plastics. And then came RF diffusion which doesn't just predict proteins, it creates new ones that don't exist in nature. This opens up all kinds of doors to custom-designed medicines tailored to specific genetic profiles and rare diseases. Just like MIT's Jamil Clinic used AI to discover Halicin, the world's first AI-created antibiotic. By the end of this year, one-third of all new drugs will have AI behind it. AI-powered workflows can slash up to 40% of the time and 30% of the cost needed to bring a molecule to preclinical trials. And in a field where every single day could mean saving someone's life, that's not just efficiency, it's a full-scale revolution. But here's where it gets truly radical. What if AI could target aging itself? Not just diseases, but the biological clock. Calico Labs and in silico medicine are doing exactly that. AI models have identified senolytic compounds that get rid of quote-unquote zombie cells, senescent cells responsible for aging. These cells accumulate in your body and drive inflammation, tissue damage, and age-related diseases. Early trials showed tissue regeneration and extended health span in mammals by 30 and 40 percent. Aubrey de Grey's Sense Research Foundation now uses AI to map all seven types of aging damage simultaneously. The goal is to make biological death optional by treating aging as a treatment condition. And it doesn't stop there. Altus Labs, backed by Jeff Bezos with the $3 billion mentioned earlier, is using AI to reprogram cells back to youthful states. Their cellular reprogramming technology has already reversed aging markers in human cells
cells in vitro. Meanwhile, AI-designed senolytics are entering human trials in 2025, promising to eliminate aged cells that are the cause of everything, from wrinkles to organ failure. This isn't sci-fi, folks. This is happening right now. AI isn't just helping us live longer, it's helping us live younger. Chapter 5 real-world applications of AI in medicine. The people who are alive today, thanks to a random chatbot interaction or a deliberate consultation with a neural network, can tell you this is very real. 84 patients and counting are alive today thanks to an AI nurse called Concern. Without it, many could have been discharged too early or not monitored at all. Get this. In four U.S. hospitals, this AI, or should we say early warning system, monitored patients through the eyes and notes of real nurses, which showed lower mortality risk and shorter hospital stays. Concern analyzed vital signs, lab results, nurse shift changes, even time of the day or week, and spotted deteriorations in patients' health two days before any traditional alert procedure. Now that's a system where algorithms worry for you. Here's another one. A Reddit user felt off after a workout. He described symptoms to ChatGPT and got a verdict. Rhabdomyolosis, a rare, deadly muscle breakdown disease. Doctors confirmed it. He spent a week in the hospital under an IV and made a full recovery, thanks to a chatbot. And while that case started with a direct query, the story of Trinity Davenport is a bit more eerie. She uploaded a photo of her palm for an AI reading. It told her to see a doctor immediately. Diagnosis, melanoma, early stage. Treatment began right away and worked really well. If the bot had predicted her future with poetic cancer metaphors, it might have been more symbolic, but far less helpful. And in Switzerland, researchers achieved the seemingly impossible. Implants restored mobility in three paralyzed patients, and all three could walk, swim, and cycle just one day after activation. Not astonished yet? You're one tough cookie. So how about something even more cinematic? A 25-year-old David... God, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Fagenbaum, a medical student, was diagnosed with the ultra-rare Castleman disease. Chemo failed, nothing really worked. He started looking into unconventional treatments himself, turned to AI to find a drug that put his rare disease into remission. He now leads Every Cure, a nonprofit using AI to give old drugs new lives. Needless to say, similar projects are well underway at Stanford as well as think tanks in Japan and China. And it doesn't stop at rare diseases either. Remember Altus Labs? They're not just reversing aging markers in a petri dish anymore. Their cellular reprogramming technology is advancing towards human trials. The same company that Jeff Bezos bet $3 billion on is working to make biological age reversal a reality in our lifetime. Meanwhile, AI-designed senolytics, those zombie cell killers we mentioned earlier, are entering human trials this year. If successful, these drugs could eliminate the aged cells that cause wrinkles, organ failure, and age-related decline. We're not talking about looking younger, we're talking about being younger at the cellular level. And when all else failed, one doctor turned to AI for a nausea case after standard therapies were deemed duds. It dug up alcohol-based inhalants, a forgotten remedy, after ranking all known treatments in medical history. Worked like a charm in minutes. As Donald Lowe, scientific director at Remedy for All, put it, quote, We have a medical treasure trove just waiting to be used. This is the power of AI. Not just smart diagnostics, but rediscovery, reinvention, and second chances. And if we go one step further, we won't just heal faster. We'll become real-life cyborgs. Chapter 6. Risks and Limitations of AI So what? You can just open up a chatbot and run a full health check, skipping labs and doctor visits? Well, let's hold our horses there for a little bit. Despite everything we've just said, don't go out burning your med school diploma, at least just yet. Trends are indeed promising. McKinsey and Frost and Sullivan predict nearly half of all clinical tasks will be automated by 2030, from paperwork and diagnostics to surgery and patient care. But here's the rundown. AI has its own little kinks to work out. Rush University says that between the years of 2013 and 2020, robotic surgeries led to 144 deaths without providing detailed explanations. What we do know is that a third of those deaths were due to complications or unavoidable risk, while almost 10% came from human error. So it's not all rosy. AI is powerful, totally, that's right, but it's not a doctor, not yet. Its greatest role today, a sentinel, a warning system, a tireless assistant. So yes, the future of medical robotics looks bright, but you do know what comes with great power, right? Thus, the question is, will AI replace doctors altogether? As with everything, it needs to be a balance. Automating routine tasks while preserving the human elements of care that require empathy, intuition, and critical thinking. That's why, first of all, we should expect the rise of entirely new roles in our lives, like AI health supervisors, medical data architects, or personal health operators. And secondly, instead of worrying that doctors will hang up their stethoscopes tomorrow, we should focus on how best leverage technology for faster and smarter care. And finally, 
As Eric Topol, author of Deep Medicine, put it, in the end, doctors will embrace AI and algorithms as their work partners. This leveling of medical knowledge will lead to a new challenge, finding and training doctors with the highest emotional intelligence. So as you can see, this transformation is reshaping not just medical tools, but the very essence of the field. The question isn't whether AI will change medicine. It already has. The real question is, are we ready for what comes next? Because in the end, what do we have? The results are in. AI saving lives today, no doubt. It's making medicine more precise, accessible, and giving more hope than ever before. And here's the most shocking part. Some researchers now openly discuss what was once pure science fiction, biological immortality. Not living forever in some mystical sense, but extending healthy lifespan indefinitely by treating aging as a disease. David Sinclair at Harvard has already shown we can reverse aging in mice by 57%. Jose Luis Cordero predicts that by 2030, we'll reach longevity escape velocity. Retro Biosciences aims to add 10 years to human lifespan within this decade, and Altus Labs is reversing cellular age right now. With AI accelerating research by decades, what once seemed impossible, defeating death itself, might become optional for those born today, maybe even for those watching this video right now. So what's our mission? Learn how to use these technologies wisely. Because the race has already begun, folks. The question isn't if we can defeat aging, the question is, will you? make it to 2030. Because the future of healthcare isn't about choosing between man or machine, it's about bringing out the best in both. And if we are lucky, it's about making death itself optional. The countdown to 2030 has started, and we are here to bring you the most exciting and important innovations shaping your future. So subscribe to the channel, like our videos, and check out our socials for more from the world of high tech.